The station covering all of the DMV. This is DC News Now. Nice, beautiful sunshine for today, plus better air quality. We have some showers, though, coming in late Sunday into Monday. Coming up this hour on DC News Now, a very unusual sight in Northeast DC as a black bear caught in a tree captured the district's attention. How he managed to get caught in a tree for hours and what officials want you to know about his capture. Plus, staying behind bars, a man being charged with fatally shooting someone during a young girl's funeral. What's next for the suspect in this case? But first, an overnight murder in Prince George's County. What police now know at this hour and how you can help the investigation. And taking a live look now at the beautiful White House with clear skies. Good morning and happy Saturday, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us on DC News Now. I'm Michaela Newton. We'll get to our top stories in just a few minutes. But first, Derek, early this week, we couldn't even see the White House that clearly. Yeah, we didn't even have blue skies. Thankfully, yeah. we have returned to seeing blue skies and actually being able to see uh, three feet in front of us. We're looking at, of course, today, moderate air quality. We have a cold yellow, low air quality uh, alert status. Nice, beautiful, and pretty much nice and clean air for today. We had, of course, all that bad air due to, of course, uh, this low pressure system over uh, the northeast pumping in all the smoke uh, from the fires of Quebec as well as British Columbia, all that smoke coming into our area. Now that is moving off towards the north and we're starting to see more uh, cleaner air down across the south. And that is, of course, going to give us uh, some better air quality here over the next several days. So it looks like we're going to be um, good with the air quality. Monday could be the only exception. We have temperatures going up into the 90s, but at least we're not going to see those record high temperatures. Nonetheless, we're seeing temperatures into the 60s, 50s and 40s this morning, going up into the mid 80s for today. All right, Derek, thanks so much. Happening today, the DC Department of Public Works is catching up on trash pickup. Collection was put on a slide schedule due to this week's air quality alerts. So if your trash was not picked up on Friday, it will be collected today instead. And breaking now, Prince George's County Police are investigating a double shooting on 14th Avenue in Hyattsville. Police say they found two men who had been shot inside an apartment building. When one of those men died at the scene, the other is currently in the hospital with serious injuries. Now, detectives are working to find a suspect and a motive and ask the public to contact them with any information. And developing now in Montgomery County, police are investigating a fatal shooting in Germantown as a homicide. They say it happened on Gunners Branch Road. And not much information is available at this time, but officials say they will release more details when they become available. Also developing now, a man is in custody for the tw May 28th murder of a teenager on a Green Line Metro train. Now, D.C. police say the train was heading to the waterfront station. They say a man opened fire inside the rail car, killing 17-year-old Brendan Ofori. Now, police have arrested 23-year-old Keith Williams in connection to the deadly shooting. Williams is being charged with felony first-degree murder while armed. And a man who was shot and killed on Thursday outside a deli in D.C. Shaw neighborhood has been identified. The victim is 62-year-old LaSanta McGill, who authorities believe was an innocent bystander. 20-year-old Demarcus Barnett has been arrested and charged with McGill's murder. Police say a dispute between Barnett and two other men inside a deli market spilled out onto 7th Street. McGill ended up getting shot and he was rushed to the hospital but did not survive. A neighbor who didn't want to go on camera says McGill was always friendly. That's tragic. He was a good guy, quiet, ex-military guy. He never bothered anybody. He'd go out and take his walks and come back home. Sometimes me and my wife or whatever, we out, give him food. And according to the nonprofit Friendship Place, McGill was an Air Force veteran who became homeless for a time and got back on his feet. Neighbors say he lived alone and was looking forward to a family reunion this summer. And new this morning, a West Virginia man is behind bars, accused of impersonating a firefighter. Officials say 32-year-old Matthew Milburn tried to cancel units that were responding to an emergency. First responders say they saw Milburn leaving the scene after he interfered on a call, claiming to be a fire captain. Now, Milburn was eventually arrested by the Allegheny County Sheriff's Office. 
And also new this morning, emergency crews in Montgomery County put out a fire outside the Adelaide, Adelaide apartments in Silver Spring. And you can see the burn marks from the fire stretching up the side of the building. Officials say there was uh, this was caused by cardboard boxes which were lit on fire by an overheated car. So far, no injuries have been reported. And new details this morning in an unbelievable story of a black bear roaming the streets of the DMV. That bear has now been removed from the Brooklyn neighborhood in Northeast. Now the drama of the day is done, but the memories and lessons learned will last a while. Our Max Marcilla spent some of the time in the neighborhood where the bear caused some concern and plenty of excitement. As he reports, the people in charge of resolving the situation peacefully say this is a display of what are capable of doing when the plan they put in place comes together. Somebody must have left the honey jar open because this black bear nicknamed Franklin was acting like he had a reason for exploring the city. Sure enough, there is a huge black bear just sort of chilling in the tree. A shocking sight, but something Jonathan Trudeau says the Maryland Department of Natural Resources plans for. MDNR was one of a few agencies tasked with safely capturing and removing the bear. We believe that you know, things went very well. The plan Trudeau describes involved getting the message out to neighbors, some of whom saw Franklin from their front door and making sure the people watching were safe. Keep on it, keep pressure on it so it stays where it is, but you don't make it feel like it's completely trapped. But after the bear came down from the tree and was exploring the Northeast neighborhood. Kind of a social morning. <laughs> giving them this chance to get a look at it has been actually really cool. It was tranquilized, captured, and taken to a wildlife management area in Maryland. This is something very exciting. You know, it, it can be scary. It's a large animal that can cause damage. I'm just very thankful for how the day went. And that was Max Marcilla reporting. Trudeau tells us when the bear is tranquilized, there are vets on standby to monitor things like its breathing. So it's not unusual for the bear to keep wandering around as the adrenaline can sometimes keep the bear upright for a little bit longer. Well, a bear wasn't the only wild animal roaming around the district on Friday. A deer wandering through U Street corridor was also caught on camera. A viewer sent a video of the animal near the intersection of 17th Street and U. And happening today, one of the biggest celebrations in the district, Capital Pride. Businesses are decked out with rainbow flags and a Capitol Block party along 17th Street Northwest starts at noon today and also lasts throughout tonight. It will feature live music, DJs, food and drinks. So the parade kicks off at 3 p.m. on 14th Street and T Street Northwest. But tomorrow there is a Pride Festival, which is happening along Pennsylvania Avenue. It's more important than ever that we come together to reaffirm that kindness, that, that love. Um, our theme is um, peace, love, and revolution. That uh, um, it's important. Um, it's important to have um, a healthy and vibrant community. And the Capital Pride Alliance says it will be monitoring air quality, but for now, the Pride Parade Festival and concert will go on as planned. And there's a whole slew of events taking place today. You'll find more of those details on our website, dcnewsnow.com. But you definitely don't want to miss it. DC News Now will be a part of today's parade, and it'll go through Logan Circle and DuPont Circle. But we also have a commuter alert this morning. DC police are issuing a traffic advisory ahead of Pride celebrations this weekend. A number of streets will be closed and emergency no parking will be enforced in new areas. So emergency no parking will be enforced on portions of 3rd, 4th and 6th Street, as well as Pennsylvania and Constitutional Avenues. And that change starts at 9 a.m. today and will be enforced through the end of the weekend. So parts of 3rd Street and Pennsylvania Avenue will be closed to traffic starting at that time as well. Parts of 4th Street, 6th Street and Constitution Avenue have already closed for the weekend and a list of the exact changes can be found on our website dcnewsnow.com. Well, DC Central Kitchen is taking part in today's DC Pride Parade to help hunger today. They will be along the parade route in the Family Zone at Stead Park on P Street. Tomorrow they will have a booth to give out bags during the Pride Festival and the kitchen hopes to reach its goal of $600,000 in donation by the end of the month. Derek.
Well, it should be a nice day on tap with beautiful blue skies across the nation's capital. Temperatures, those highs will be into the middle 80s for today. 60s this morning, getting up to near 80 by midday. Going in towards the afternoon, and going up into the middle 80s. Tomorrow, though, things are getting nice, warm and toasty into the 90s. Plus, we have a little bit of rain coming our way on Monday. I'll have more details coming up.